Now, are there any general questions from last time that we were here? I know that we spent about three hours on uh, learning a bit of uh, Movie Maker, Windows Movie Maker, in order to make a movie. Uh, any general questions on that that we talked about since last time? Nope. Okay, so we'll get into today's topic of uh, uh, let's create a YouTube channel and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll set it up and use it. So go ahead and open up your web browser. Open your web browser and we'll go to youtube.com. So go ahead and go to youtube.com. Now, um, YouTube can be used in two big ways. You can be a consumer or you can be a creator. Most people use YouTube as a consumer, which is that they visit YouTube, they watch a video, or two, or three, or ten, and uh, they're consuming uh, YouTube content. So we will be creators. We'll have our own different kind of screen uh, on YouTube as creators, where we will see the list of our videos and all of that, but also our hits and how many you know views we've gotten on a video, how many subscribers we have to our channel, uh, a control panel basically, a dashboard, our creator studio. So I will be writing some notes throughout the day and I'll put those notes in the folder. And then just to reiterate, we've got uh, we've got consumer, we've got creator. I'm going to say here, uh, regular people using or watching YouTube videos. And then us, we will be uh, social media marketers. Uh, these are us who are creating content. Uh, creating these videos. Remember last time we uh, looked at that handout, which is still in the network folder, uh, about the six types, six possible types of videos that you can create to upload to YouTube. So picking one of those, you would create a video, you'd be a social media marketer, you'd be a creator, you'd upload videos. Social media marketers uploading YouTube videos. So those are the two big kinds. Two big, two big kinds of YouTube users. Two big kinds of YouTube users. And so today we're going to segue into being a creator. Now, the good news is that we can set up the creator studio pretty easily. Uh, we just create an account. And uh, if you've already got uh, a YouTube login information, we can do it pretty fast you already have YouTube login information without even knowing it because if you took the class where we talked about Google Plus we have login, a login for YouTube and if, even if you didn't take the the Google Plus class you have the ability to uh, log in with a Gmail account so I'll take that over here so you, have, you can use either Gmail or the email address that we set up previously. And we'll do that right now. So here we are in YouTube at the top right corner. Go ahead and click sign in. So uh, obviously when you go to youtube.com you see the latest videos and I'm seeing everything wrong with Star Wars Episode 7. And it only has 1.7 million viewers. There was a lot wrong with it. I liked it but there was a lot wrong with it. Uh, Click sign in, and here then it's going to ask you, okay, sign in. And we created uh, Google Plus accounts a while ago, over a month ago. Uh, so you want to use that same login information when we set up uh, Google Plus a while ago, sign in with it. If you don't have, if you didn't, if you weren't here with us on that day, and you have a Gmail account, lo log in with your Gmail account. And if you don't have that, You'll have to take a moment to create an account. I won't take a moment. I won't take very long to do that. I assume everyone has some Gmail or YouTube accounts. So, 
take a moment to sign in. when we create any of these accounts there's always a, a little bit of a of a speed bump at the very beginning I've noticed when I teach this because depending on your individual setup things might be different on mine when I signed in here it's asking me use YouTube as this account or that account now this is one of my testing accounts but on my other account where I do this for real clients I sign in and I've got a list of like eight accounts. So the point of this is you can have multiple accounts attached to one Gmail email address. On mine I've signed in and it's asking me to choose one of them. So I'll choose one of them. If yours is asking you for that too, choose one or if you're confused, let me know. Because again, there's always a speed bump at the beginning. Did everyone manage to sign in? Question? Why would you have individual sub accounts like that? Well, definitely in my case where I, I'm part of a company that we do social media for clients, I would use my personal Gmail account to sign in and create multiple YouTube accounts for different clients. So it's asking me, which of these YouTube accounts would you like to use? My own personal one or client A, client B, client X? Question? So is that different channels? Or yes, accounts? different channels. Yeah, we need to use that terminology. Um, YouTube uses so if you're in the account, channels you a new channel. as a name for a profile. So we've been talking about profiles over and over. YouTube calls them channels. Question? Yes. If you're if you um, you have a YouTube account, that you've got a video in, and you want to create another channel. Um, I'll show that in just a moment, and that's one of the things that might be tricky depending on how everyone, where everyone is at. So I'm just going to sign in. Uh, I'm going to get in here to the front page. Did everyone get a chance to, to sign in there? Okay, so the, the question then here about how to create a different channel. You probably want to do this. You probably want to create uh, a channel for your business. Because as soon as you log in, it might be giving you uh, your, your account for your personal YouTube. I don't want that. Uh, just like when we talked about uh, Google Plus a while ago, Google will automatically give you a personal, um, a personal Google Plus account, and then we created a business, um, a business Google Plus uh, profile. So we would want to do something like that on YouTube. And let's give it a try this way it might vary for people but at the top right corner you've got your icon if, it, if it's got your face or whatever that means you've set it up with your Gmail and it knows your face or whatever but mine's got this icon of a it looks like a little gift if yours looks like a person's icon or whatever just click on the icon on the top right corner and this is the spot very much like Google Plus where we would use to jump between accounts you can have different our channels. We can jump between different channels, YouTube channels, YouTube profiles on the corner here. Uh, so it lists a couple of mine here. Do you, do you guys see something that says Creator Studio? Mm -hmm. Click on Creator Studio. Now this ad account is not what you think so don't worry about clicking that. Click Creator Studio. This is always, I forget this part too. There is a button where we can add more accounts. That's not under create. I don't see one. Just uh, one at a time. What was the first comment? I don't see the I don't know, the first comment. Someone said you don't see what? Uh, yeah, okay. 
Well, I'm looking for, there is a button about adding more accounts. I just saw it the other day when I talked this the other day. Um, this is what I'm saying about the speed bump. There is a way to add multiple accounts. Uh, is it up on the gear? Oh, yes, that's, that's where it is. Okay. Uh, wherever you're at here, click on your icon on the top right corner, wherever you're at. Then click on the little gear. See a little gear right there? So this is the YouTube settings icon. If you click on that, then you get this screen where at the bottom it says additional features. See all my channels or create a new channel. So that's where we want to go. Wherever you're at, go ahead and go there. Click on see all my channels, create a new channel. <coughs> so in my particular case, I have these two channels. One Gmail account and I've got two channels. I've got uh, one channel, a profile. I've got two channels, one channel for one account, one for another. And again, on my other email address, it's got a list of like eight of them because I deal with these other clients. So you would want to create, in my case, I would definitely want to create different channels for different clients. For yourself, it's fine if you create multiple channels as well. Maybe for yourself, for your business, you can create a couple of channels. One is going to focus on tutorials, and one is going to focus on product videos, let's say. Or you can mix them all into one. There's no wrong or right answer, but if you believe you need to specify your content, it's a good idea maybe to create different channels. An alternative, as we'll see later, is to create playlists. I may upload 10 videos of four different types. I could create uh, a playlist for one of those types of videos, a playlist for a different type of video, and another playlist for another one. So different playlists, sort of like folders, to organize my videos. So at the moment, it might be too, too much to, to kind of think about, but at least you want to have one channel here. Um, you might have it automatically with your personal account. So I'm going to go through the process of creating a brand new channel here. If you already have your business channel, that's fine. Stick with it. If not, again, you can create and delete these as many times as you want. So it might be a good idea to uh, create a channel just to see how that looks. And then once you learn these concepts, delete the channel later. I will, create, I will click Create a Channel. It asks for a name and a category. So let's say I'm going to do Victor's Bakery. There aren't a lot of, uh, of these to choose from, a product, a company, arts, or other, whatever one will be fine. There's no wrong answer. It can be changed later. I'm going to say this for my company. <coughs> it says, your new channel comes with the Google Plus page. I believe on the next screen, if you're using the name of an existing Google Plus account, it'll ask you, would you like to link the two? Because if we already created a YouTube, a, a Google Plus account previously, we probably want to add a YouTube channel to it on the next screen. Again, if mine looks different than yours, let me know because it is a speed bump at the beginning. Okay, quick question. Mm -hmm. Can, are all videos on YouTube public? The default is that they are all public, but we can change them to private so that only certain people can see them. So I'm doing university teaching and I want private videos, I can change that. Yes. So I can create a channel for the university where I'm teaching. Yes, you can uh, set your channel for only certain people to see it, definitely. So you want to agree to these terms and click Done. In my case, it's asking me for, to verify my phone, so I'll go ahead and do that quickly. If if yours doesn't ask you that, that's fine. You can then proceed.
So if it asks you for verification, that's just to try to prevent spam, because anyone can create um, anyone can create a YouTube channel, and therefore uh, spammers can and real people can. So let's confirm here that you were able to do this. Question. Okay. Um, I didn't know about this. So I've been making videos for this other little company and. So can I move those videos over to my new channel? No, not automatically. You'd have to do it manually. You'd have to move, you'd have to download the video off of one channel and upload it to another. Oh. Or if you still have the, the video off on your computer, you can just upload it to the new channel. You can't, to my knowledge, transfer from account to account. Okay. Yes? Somehow I got to that screen a lot fewer clicks than you did without a verification. What was the verification for one video? Well, like I said, the verification is just to help uh, YouTube prevent spam. Yeah, but why did you get it and I didn't? That's because you did it before it so I didn't No, know. most likely because I've done this several times. It's the opposite. I've done this a lot. I've created a lot of accounts. So Google might be thinking, why is this person creating so many accounts? So on that side, they just want to confirm that I am still the, the, right, the right person. So for you as a very first-time beginner, it might, not, it might not check with you because for whatever reason, and me is using it for a while, it's checking with me for whatever reason. You don't quite know. Well, I, have, I don't have a lot of channels, but it's asking me for verification also. I got verification. Yeah, so it's just kind of random ish. Yes? Is creating a channel a requirement to proceed? Because I'm on an NPO account and want to be created the additional channel. No, no. If you've got the existence channel, you can definitely use that, and then uh, you can delete. Uh, whatever we're about to do, if you'd like to later. Can I ask what an NPO is? It's a nonprofit organization. All right, so um, you might then get to a screen. Does everyone uh, see a sort of screen that looks like this? It's very basic. Uh, this is your your channel homepage. Basically, this is what people would see if they find you on YouTube. If someone searches YouTube, Victor's Bakery, they might find my channel. This is basically the home page of my channel. At the top, it's got my, uh, it's got my address. And as a beginner, um, so ignore this part that says guided help, but uh, that's my channel address at the moment, youtube.com slash channel slash gibberish. So at the beginning, I get everyone gets a channel with a gibberish name. Eventually, uh, you will be able to claim your nice short name because for example my company's YouTube channel is PMD Interactive just like that youtube.com slash PMD Interactive but when we created it for the first time it was youtube.com slash channel slash blah 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 so you guys get the gibberish name at the beginning and I think they changed their rules recently unfortunately that you will not be able to change this to a nice short name until you have 100 subscribers which is a pretty high bar. Now, this is weird because when I was teaching this earlier in the week at Southwestern College and we did this, some people said, oh, I can add my custom address right now. And most people said, I can't add it. So I don't know what Voodoo uh, YouTube does that it works sometimes and that it doesn't other times. From what I've seen in the documentation that I've read straight from Google, nowadays it seems that you need at least 100 subscribers to be able to change your name. That's another tactic for them to try to prevent spam. So unfortunately for us, we're going to have to have this gibberish looking name. But that's a, that's a link. It doesn't roll off the tongue, obviously. But that's a link that you can copy and paste onto an email, that you can share on your Twitter, that you can share on your Facebook. It's still a link. You'll just have to copy and paste it to send to people. If you do have the ability to change your name, we'll see where you could do it a little later. But we've got this account here, which is very bare, and it looks like a, like a spam account because it hasn't been edited yet. Uh, notice if you hover over, this is one of the odd things about being a, a YouTube creator. Some things are not obvious until you hover over them. How do I change my logo? You hover over it. How do I change this uh, channel art picture? You hover over it. How do I change the name here or this name or that. Oftentimes you hover over something and it'll let you do it. So if you have the ability to change this, I would do it as soon as possible. Meaning if you have your company logo, I would change that. I would add a channel art, so some graphic in the background here. 
I don't have any of this art or logos to do at the moment, so I won't. But if you've got it also linked with your Google Plus account, it should take your branding information from Google Plus and add it to your YouTube. If it doesn't do it right away, it might just take a little while to link the two accounts. In any case, one of the things that I want to say here, as I've said with every other network, is as soon as possible, complete your channel, your profile, your channel info. You want to add your logo, you want to add that picture on the back. There is Furthermore, a little um, but spot here for channel description. You know, there's a spot for you to write uh, all about your channel, what's on your YouTube. Part of this description appears elsewhere on YouTube. So this is uh, that that you need to do for every social network so that pe it helps you get found. When people search on YouTube, when people search on Twitter, when people search on Pinterest, uh, all of this stuff that you create will help you get found. So again, what would I write in this channel description? Sentences and keywords that help you get found. So this is Victor's Bakery. I'm going to say something like San Diego based bakery in the heart of East Lake San Diego. Uh, subscribe to us uh, for the latest yummy treats. So you've got some space here to write something. It's up to you. Um, there's probably a limit here, but I would I would write, write a couple sentences. Done. And now there's something here that's further uh, filled in for people to take take you seriously on uh, on YouTube. Let's click on the top right corner icon again. And because I've created another YouTube channel on the same account, now I've got here the ability to jump between different channels. You may have one, you may have more than one, it's okay. But I'm saying that just like Google+, clicking on the top right corner will let you jump from channel to channel, profile to profile of yours. Click your, click your icon on the top right corner and click Creator Studio. So I have a brand new account and it's telling me you don't have any videos yet. So we'll upload one in just a moment. Let's look first at the left side here. Now that we're in the Creator Studio, we have this menu on the left that's very important for us to, to, to be able to get back to whenever. Um, so this is in the Creator Studio. Uh, I'm in the dashboard. Eventually when I've got a video in the dashboard, I will be able to see some quick stats. I will be able to see the number of videos I've uploaded, analytics, so how many views, how many subscribers, all of that stuff. YouTube is going to be giving me uh, updates and tips on how to improve myself using YouTube. This is all in the dashboard. <clears throat> Click on Video Manager. Here then will be your area to manage your videos. Every video that you've uploaded will be listed here where you can quickly delete it, change a description, you know, do different things with it, see some quick stats, playlists. Let's take a quick look at playlists. This is what I'm saying about I can have 20 videos on YouTube, and it's a good idea to create playlists. Playlists are like folders to store your videos. And an idea for this is I can put a variety of videos that relate to each other in a particular uh, playlist. So just to show you like this, here's one of these YouTube channels that I manage. Um, and there are playlists. This is a, a channel about financial information. And so there's a few, maybe 15 videos or 20 videos or so here. And so there are different playlists for different topics. Uh, here's a playlist about, okay, 2015 in the stock market. So it's got three videos. 
Uh, here's videos that were published in February. So it's got three videos. Uh, this one is about a list of top five videos. So there's three in there. So a person could come to this channel and see all of the videos like this. Or they could go to the playlists and go look at specific kinds of videos that they that they care about. <coughs> yes? That video that has the circles with the line through it, is that a disabled uh, playlist? No, that's the, th that's the thumbnail of that particular video. That particular video uh, is, the name of that video is, Don't Buy an Xbox One, PS4, or Wii U. So that video is about advice about not buying a video game console to instead buy in video game stock. Uh, it'll give you better returns. So that's just the thumbnail used to create that video, but in the context of the playlist, it sort of looks like a disabled playlist. It's just that it's taking the thumbnail of that video and showing it there. Yes, on this particular channel, this is one that I've worked on. These are all videos that I've created for this channel, and therefore these are playlists that I created for this channel. We can create playlists as a consumer to organize the videos that we've seen. Let's say I'm not going to upload my own videos, but I like to watch a lot of music videos. So I'm going to make a playlist for all the videos of this band, and that band, and this band. So I can create playlists as a consumer or as a creator. And definitely as a creator, they're valuable because, I'll make the note here, create playlists or use playlists as a creator so you can group together your videos. So when someone watches one video, YouTube will automatically play your next video. You have one financial advice video that someone watches. It's going to end. YouTube is then going to automatically want to show people another video. It may be someone else's video, another financially related video. To guide people to keep watching your videos, you put them in a playlist so that then someone finishes watching your video, it's in a playlist, so YouTube will automatically show the next video in the playlist, keeping people watching your videos instead of someone else. Yeah? When that cryptic uh, address you showed it we, uh, a few minutes ago for us, uh, when someone clicks on that link, does it bring up to our play playlists that are shown here, for example? Well, notice. Um, we a particular channel has an address and specifically there's the address featured and we'll see these screens in a moment for the home screen I have a screen for all my videos which is the address plus videos and then when when we make a playlist we will have an address and our playlists. And we'll bring them to the playlist screen. If we share this address with the playlist, we'll send people directly to our playlists, yes. So once we set up our channel, we'll have playlists and videos, and we'll be able to guide people directly. But at the moment, we've all got uh, you know, a channel that looks uh, very you know, we've got a channel that's got a very weird name which we can't quite change just yet. Okay, so that's the big idea with playlists. We'll create some later. You might not have an idea of what kind of groups to create yet. Maybe after you've uploaded a few videos, two, three, four videos, then you figure out, okay, these are playlists that I can create to organize them together. So again, the example of this particular account. Um, so that's how those are grouped together. Let me see, I think also... To show a different channel here that I'm involved in. Um, we've just got one on this one. Uh, a playlist full of how-to videos. How to do this, how to do that. And so at the moment it's got three videos. 
someone comes to this playlist, clicks play all, and then it will play this video. When it's done, it'll play the next one and the next one. So you keep people on your Okay, so check this out. Own videos. And you want to get views on your videos just like you want to get followers on YouTube on Twitter, uh, followers or likes on, on, on Facebook. That's your captive audience. Uh, you want to get people to watch your videos. And um, why? The why of it all is that here's a video on how to code a basic HTML5 document. It's got some views. People are going to look at it. They're going to say, okay, I can do it. Uh, I'm learning, but I need someone to make a website. And I've tried to learn it on my own. I can't do it. The, this company seems to know what they're doing. I might reach out to them. There's contact information. Um, so they might reach out to us to do a consultation or get hired. So you're going to create videos, again, to entice people to do something, to buy your product, to subscribe to your newsletter, to read your blogs, something. Because as we'll see in detail, we can add links and all of this great stuff. You've got live streaming. This is something that YouTube has added new, that, added, that's, that, that they've added recently. This whole world of live streaming. YouTube, classic YouTube, expects you to upload a completed video just like we did last week. This new aspect of YouTube is about streaming. If you've got a web camera or your laptop has a camera, you have the ability to turn on live streaming and YouTube will then broadcast you live at that point for, for free. So that could be a possible way to use YouTube as well. And what it does is whatever you broadcasted live then get saved for people to watch later. So if they couldn't watch it at that moment, they can come back and watch it later. So I'm going to write here a new way to use YouTube. Live broadcasts, also known as streaming. Now there are two different nuances here of stream and events. Uh, one is you're going to stream it right now. One is an event where you're going to set it up uh, like you're going to schedule it that next week on Tuesday 9 a.m. I'm gonna have a show and then stream now is a, I turn on the camera now and I stream yeah is this a classroom of the future or are there time limits on this thing where uh, you, know, you could do more than a half hour or something like that? I don't think there are time limits uh, I haven't uh, seen it very recently I haven't streamed on YouTube very recently so I'm not sure but when I've done it I've been doing it like 15 minutes at a time or so 20 minutes so um, I'm not sure. There could be limits. Maybe not. Would that take the place of open broadcast, open broadcast or software? No, the software is the tool that helps you set up the streaming, uh, and then you actually then stream it to people with, with, uh, with YouTube or something else. Because YouTube is going to say, uh, we can just turn on your web camera and record. But if I want to get more complex, like with my open broadcaster, I don't want to record myself on the on the webcam. I want to record my screen. Your screen, your webcam is not going to record your screen. So something like Open Broadcaster, I can set it up to have my screen and me in the corner and tie all of this multimedia together and then broadcast it through YouTube. So this is a big endeavor, a big can of worms. We're not really going to talk about it too much. It's a lot to, to work with. But this is part of the gener the new generation of of, of streaming services. So other examples. Mm -hmm. Just one moment. Other examples. Uh, we've got also uh, Ustream.tv. We've got Twitch.tv. Justin.tv. We've got Periscope. That one's an app. We've got Meerkat. That one's also an app. And we've got Meek rat, <laughs> near cat, blab.im, that's a website. So that one's got an odd address. That one is http colon slash slash blab.im, not .com. Uh, so this is just a bunch of others, and there's still a bunch of other ones. Someone mentioned one the other day that I forgot already. I think AirPlay or Airstream or something. There's a bunch of, address, a bunch of services out there for you to stream live. So this is a whole new world of being live. Periscope is one of the more famous ones. It's an app. You get it for your iPhone, your Android. You turn it on, and then all your followers see you live at that moment. 
And obviously for some, for some aspect you think, that's so boring, someone's showing their breakfast. Yes, but what about, as I said, there's the frivolous side of social media and there's the professional side of social media, and they're both valid. Your professional side is you are going to be at your store, you're going to turn on live broadcast, and you're going to say, hey everyone, let's check out the latest products that just came in. And you're just going to walk down the aisle and say, this is our new item here, and it's $10 off, and this is something here. Come on down to our store next time and tell them Victor sent you. You know, a commercial for free, broadcasted live. And then you've got followers, that captive audience, and hopefully some of them go to your website and buy the product, or come to the store and buy the product. It's just another way to reach an audience. Question. So um, your subscribers on YouTube get a little notice when you're going live? Exactly. So that's your captive audience. You're going to get subscribers, you're going to get followers, and then when you go live, or when you upload a pre-recorded video, they will get a notification. Victor, Victor's Bakery is live, or they will get the notification that says Victor's Bakery uploaded a new video. Let's look at Community tab. There's a lot of little things here. Uh, I'm not going to go through them all, but uh, under Community, we'll see later the default behavior of YouTube when you upload a video and when you go live is for any crazy person to write any crazy comment. The default is comments are active. Anyone can write anything. We'll see later that we can change it so comments will not show up until they're approved, which might be better to do, to keep out the bad comments, the off-topic comments, the spam comments. So if I do activate that, and we'll see later how, if we do activate um, comment moderation, they will be listed here. Under community comments, all the comments that have been approved will be listed here, and if later on actually I don't want the comment anymore, I can take it away. If there are comments held for review, they will be listed right there. It'll show me a list on the top right corner. It'll show me a notification on the top right corner that I've got a new comment, a new notification, and then when I look at them here, it'll say John Smith wrote this, and then I can either approve it or delete it. And then YouTube is pretty smart about then seeing this is likely spam, probably spam, but check it before we delete it for you. And it might be a real comment that you can approve. So this will make for a better YouTube experience. It is a little bit of an extra effort. I personally, for myself and all my clients, have this turned on so just we can steer the conversation a little bit more positively. And I've got one in the queue that I've got to deal with. Uh, very soon. You can send messages back and forth through YouTube. You can get a list of all your subscribers right there. Uh, we'll talk about subtitles and such later. We'll talk about those later. Let's take a quick look at community settings. YouTube is a place for you to share video, but just like every company, they self-aggrandize a bit, meaning that YouTube aspires to be higher than just a website for you to share videos. YouTube aspires to be, you know, an important social network, an important community building tool, not just a place to share cat videos. So you're going to see terminology here and there about community and, and this and that. And so what YouTube is trying to say is, don't just think about uploading videos, think about creating a community, people that subscribe to your channel, just like people in the real world that there are channels on television that I love to watch. You know, I can't live without this channel, or I like to watch that channel. You want to do that also. You want to do that also on YouTube in that you build a community of people subscribing to you, keeping up to date with you, commenting. And so under community settings, we have a spot here that if people are constantly posting negative things or just being a troll or a spammer, you can create a blacklist to block things. You can hide users, approve users, um, you know, keep the community nice. You most likely want a good community of people uh, to pay attention. So that would be under community settings. Uh, there's some highlight options here. These are all good. Um, the defaults are fine. 
would you like to show the most popular comments first? That's useful because someone comments on your on your video, someone else can see that comment and give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So if people are liking a person's comment, that one will show up first. The popular comments show up first. So again, popularity breeds pop popularity. Positivity breeds positivity. So as you've got these positive comments, other people will, positive, will comment positively. Would you like to show comments and messages from subscribers on your videos, yes or no? I don't quite see the difference between yes or no. I think they're both fine to have active. Um, the default had it off, so that whatever you want to choose there is fine. I'll, I'll turn it on just to see the difference. Would you like to see comments and messages from highly engaged fans, meaning those that they themselves already comment a lot are popular themselves? That would be useful. Again, popularity breeds popularity. When you see people that are popular commenting on your posts, those people will see, hey, why is this popular person commenting on that video? It must be a good video. Let me watch it. So popularity breeds popularity. Once you've got more than 500 subscribers, um, or that is, um, show, focus the comments of the subscribers that have the channels that have more than this number of followers. That's that popularity. It's more about the popularity, yeah. So these defaults that are here are just fine. I did turn one on here because um, I'm not exactly sure of the nuance of that, but all of these defaults are fine. Default settings, comments on your videos. This is what I'm saying about allow all comments when, you, when you've got a video, let any crazy person write any crazy thing. Obviously, let any good person write any good thing. But I would recommend hold all comments for review. Even the good ones. The good ones are still going to be moved over to the community screen here under comments, and you still have to approve them. I would still do that because, again, that's a way to keep your channel on message. People can comment directly on your channel homepage. Same sort of thing. Allow anyone to write anything? Maybe after I give it the once over. So I recommend both of these turn on hold all comments. When you create a video, you can set it up like uh, with credits, as in this video was recorded by this person and this person was the narrator, and this person was the writer. You can do credits. You can add credits to your video to be pretty advanced if you want. In the same case here, would you like uh, those credits to be visible right away, or would you like them to be held until you review them? Probably, again, want to hold everything until you approve it, just in case. If you make any changes here, click on the top right corner to save. Creative credits, that's, uh, isn't that just you, like your name on there? No, because I could be part of a crew recording this. So uh, I'm the person that wrote the script and someone else shot the video, held the camera. Someone else was on screen speaking, so there could have been three people as, with their own creative credits. And they would all have YouTube accounts? They would all have YouTube accounts and links back to their accounts. So this is a way for other people to build their views, you know, by cross-pollinating. And then under credits, under community, here's where I would look at that. Who has claimed the credit on the video, and which credits have been published, and which should be removed, and all of that. This is not going to be that useful for most of us, because I'm going to be the one recording it, and editing it, and uploading it. But if you've got a crew of people, perhaps you might share some credits. Let's look at channel. There's a bunch of settings here. One of them here under status and features. You have to decide if the channel we're working with right now is going to be a real channel that you're going to keep or you're just playing with this and you'll delete it later. Because if this is going to be a real channel that you're going to keep, you're going to want to at some point come to the screen and select verify. 
you want to verify with YouTube that this is a real channel so that you can get more features. I'm not going to activate verify. I think it's just going to ask you to confirm your email and some basic stuff. But if you do verify, you will get more features, such as down here, monetization. This is how you make money off of your YouTube videos. You would have to verify, jump through a couple of hoops, which are not complicated, which we're not going to do together. But this is the spot here. Once you verify, you will be able to turn on monetize. What that will do is, as you upload YouTube videos, you will have the ability to activate ads on your videos. So when someone watches your video, an ad will pop up, most likely related to what your video is. And as someone watches that ad and thinks, I actually do need that product, they will click on that ad and you will earn some revenue from that. How much? There's a huge secret proprietary formula that YouTube has for that. But if someone simply sees a video of yours and it's got an ad, let's see if I can get one to show up here like that. So if someone's going to watch this video, they see this ad from Dell, and they click skip, I don't know. Reduce downtime by 50% by updating to the someone, latest high-performance Dell systems laptop, with Intel Core M5 processors. The Dell, and then I earn from that. How much? Again, Hello, I don't this know. Is Victor it depends on a variety of factors Just that build YouTube an Android app keeps a secret. Studio. But from my minutes. experience in doing this well, first we need for a few years, it does work. I have made myself money visual. off of YouTube. Not a whole bunch like some of these other accounts, but some videos, you know, earn me like $10 a month. Okay, $10. I can afford to buy one and a half lattes. Uh, <laughs> but the more you do this, the more uh, you can earn from it. And yes, there are people that make thousands of dollars a month from YouTube. You wouldn't believe it for the types of videos that they make. Uh, but uh, yeah, people can make a lot of money off of YouTube. So this is a little icing on the cake. We're not going to go through the process. You can do it if you'd like. But here's a little icing on the cake, showing off these commercials for your business and making a little money off of them too. <clears throat> yeah? Um, when they click on that, they completely leave YouTube though, right? Mm -hmm. And then they have to find their way. Does it open in a new, a new tab? It does open in a new tab. And they can just go back to you. They close that other window, and then they're back on your video. Okay. Yeah. Yes? So all we do as a creator is just push monetize, and then they just set up all the ads? And yeah. OK. Uh, you will see a little bit later, <clears throat> you can tell YouTube how to show those ads before the video, after the video, in the middle of the video. So if I've got a long 20 minute long video, I might break it up with a, it's called a mid-roll ad. It's in the middle of the video, it rolls in the middle. So we can have a pre-roll, a post-roll, a mid-roll. We can have um, different kinds of um, ads running throughout our video uh, and then we can earn revenue in different ways through that. YouTube takes care of it. And as, the, as more videos you upload and more you fill out your account, YouTube will get better at showing. Let's show a technology video on this techno, a technology ad on this technology video. Not a video about diapers on this video about uh, baked goods. It'll show related things so people will be more apt to click and you earn money. There's a new uh, there's a new aspect of YouTube. Have you have you guys heard of YouTube Red? R E D. YouTube Red is a new uh, is a new thing that YouTube offers. I haven't explored it a lot, but to my knowledge, YouTube Red is a new subscriber feature. What that is is if you're tired of seeing all these ads, guess what? You can pay YouTube nine ninety nine a month, and now you will not see ads on YouTube anymore. You will get all these extra features like live streaming and music streaming. It's not just about the ads, it's other things. But YouTube says if you pay YouTube $9.99 a month, you get a different experience. Well, how does that work for us with monetization if we are no longer going to see ads anymore? Now what YouTube does is if you're going to earn money off of YouTube Red subscribers, now it's all about how long someone watches your video. So if you created a 20 minute long video, but people only watch 3 minutes of it, you're going to earn less on that than someone that watched five minutes or seven minutes of your video. A subscriber feature, $9.99 a month, where people can 
skip ads or people where people see no ads Question. and other things. Just one moment. People see no no ads and get other features for you means you need to uh, hold people's attentions longer. You need to have people watch more of your video if you're gonna monetize. If you will monetize. If you're not gonna monetize, don't worry about it. Yes? Um, let's say that you upload a video that you would also embed on the website. Mm -hmm. You don't want that ad there. Um, so would you not verify that account in that no, case? I would still verify the account. That'll give you the ability to add ads to everything. But you can take off an ad to a specific video. And when we embed it, I believe we can also choose on that particular video not to show ads on that video. Sets in the embed code. What's that? It's probably in the embed code. Yes, exactly. So that's why you might want to ver verify at some point, not just for monetization, but look at this. If you want to have videos that are longer than 15 minutes, right now we've got a limit of 15. I might want to do tutorial videos that are going to take 20 minutes. And the length of the YouTube video does not matter. People always ask me, how long should I make my videos? It doesn't matter. It depends on the content. You might get a, your point across in two minutes. You might need 20 minutes. You won't know how long to make your videos until you start to make videos and start to see your stats. And it will tell you. People lost interest uh, on average on your videos in 45 seconds. So maybe I should be making videos that are 2 minutes long instead of 10 minutes long. So we'll go right here. Decide on the length of your videos after you create several and check the analytics, the stats. So I can't tell you how long to make your video. You have to try different lengths. One minute long, five minutes long, ten minutes long, let's say. Put a couple of those videos out there three or four videos or so, and then you'll start to see eventually in your stats screen. I'll show the stats screen a little later. You'll start to see the attention spans of people. For the long videos, I've seen even for a long video, uh, people have good attention spans because you will see a chart that shows, okay, for these first 30 seconds, people were pretty engaged, and then less people, they started to go away, but then they started to come back five minutes later, and then you're going to see like peaks and valleys of the attention span of your video. So with all of that information, it helps us uh, think of what kinds of videos to create, because if people are losing interest consistently, quickly, maybe the kinds of videos we're creating are not what people want to see. Maybe the length of these videos are not the length that people have time for. See what else? Uh, I'm going to skip some of these uh, custom thumbnails. By default, when you upload a video, YouTube will randomly pick a thumbnail out of a random point in your video, one of three. Somewhere in the beginning, somewhere at the end, somewhere in the middle. One of those random thumbnails may be good enough, and then you'll, you might get a, a thumbnail. So if we look right here, uh, you know, this is a pretty bad thumbnail. I think it says it took uh, a shot out of the video. Same thing here. This is a better one. Look at that text to really catch attention. Um, you can customize a thumbnail like this to get attention, like this, how to spot a liar. How, what would happen if you would, didn't drink water? So all of these are customized with some sort of branding. Uh, that's what this is saying here. Custom thumbnail. If you want to turn that on, you have to verify your account. And then what you would do is you would create a thumbnail in Photoshop. You would need to, for thumbnails, thumbnail size, you would need to create in some sort of graphic software a 19 by 1080 pixel sized graphic. Uh, 
uh, format doesn't really matter, but you could do ping or JPEG. You need to create a graphic in some graphic software with those dimensions. Put whatever you want into that graphic and put it and attach it to your video, as we'll see later. And then that'll catch people's attention better than the randomly generated one that it does for you. You have to think small, however. Think small. That 1920 by 1080 is the size of an HD quality television. But I'm saying think small because YouTube will take that thumbnail and show it in different sizes in different different areas, different screens. Look at how small 1920 gets down here. And look at how it's sized when I'm looking at it here. And then when someone uh, looks at it on yet another screen, it's a different kind of size. So you want to make it that big and it'll grow it and shrink it to the right size. But think small always in that look at how small it's going to be at some point. So be careful what you write. This one here that we created is not, honestly, is not the best thumbnail. You can't really see what it says at that size. Look at how much better that one is. And that, that one's a little better too. Even though this one kind of broke the rule that I'm telling you, this particular video did seem to be a hit. Because I would count 33,000 views as a hit. You never know is what I'm getting at. You never know what kind of video will take off, the length of your video, your thumbnail, the content of the video, you don't know. In our channel right here, if I go look at all of the videos we've published, 96 views, 80 views, 104 views, 40 views, 66 views, 1300 views, 129 views, 33,000 views. You never know what's going to take off. We think all of these are great, people will love them, we spent a lot of hard work on them, and that's the one that took off, which we did do some hard work on, of course, but you know, we would think, well, this one's really going to be popular, how to make your own website. 66 views, because everyone else is doing that kind of video. Yes? Uh, if your live stream is YouTube still throw in an ad? If you activate that, yes. And therefore you can monetize that as well. Think small. How will your thumbnail look? How will your thumbnail look uh, at the smallest size? So don't cram a lot. Don't cram in a lot of stuff into that thumbnail because it might not be very discernible. Like this one. This is not. This is also not a very good one. You can change these as many times as you want. And one of the to-do things that eventually we'll do is update that thumbnail uh, because at that size, that's that's a bit small. Did you tell us what the size of the um, little icon at the top is? The this one on the top right here? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, you just need to have some sort of square graphic. And that one is also going to go down pretty small. Um, and that one came from Google Plus when we talked about Google Plus. So just any square size graphic, but again, think how small it's going to get. It's going to show it small here, but it's going to show it large on another screen and show it large on another screen. So you just want to start rather big. And I suppose what we can say for that is channel, let's say square channel icon, I would say a good size is 512 pixels squared. And then it'll grow it and shrink it to different sizes. Question? I'm just going to say keep your thumbnails relevant to your video. Yes. Yeah, so when you create these, make sure that you're not, you're not doing the bait and switch. You know, don't put in, you've probably seen them, that there's some thumbnail about, oh, I can't believe that, let me watch it. And then there wasn't anything about that in that video. People have the power then, when they watch your, your video, as we'll discuss this stuff later, upvote, downvote, thumbs up, thumbs down. So this is also going to help you get found. Popularity breeds popularity. As your videos get more thumbs up, your video will be shown to more people. YouTube will want to show it to more people. 
If your video is getting a lot of downvotes, that must mean that your video is not good, it's irrelevant, it's it's badly made and such, and therefore you're not going to get that boost. So here, out of 33,000 views, 104 people um, were were not lazy enough to click like to cl to click the like, the thumbs up. 17 disliked this video so much they clicked thumbs down. <laughs> a few years ago, YouTube used to have one star, two star, three star, four star, five star. Anyone remember that? You can give star ratings to your YouTube videos. At a certain point, I remember reading the blog post, YouTube said, our stats show that most people either really like the video or really dislike the video. There isn't much in the middle. Mm -hmm. So YouTube took away three stars, two stars, four stars. Now it's just thumbs up, thumbs down. There's no ambiguity there. Paid content, again, once you verify, you'll be able to have paid content. You'll be able to have people pay to watch your YouTube videos. There are caveats there, but if you'd like another way to make money off of your videos, you can go through that process. You can learn more after you verify and monetize. You can make money by by selling, basically, access to your YouTube videos. Content ID appeals. Um, it should go without saying, as we've been saying it for every other social network, you should create original content as much as possible. Especially on YouTube. If you simply borrow some video from elsewhere and change it a little bit and then upload it, you're going to get that video taken down, most likely. YouTube YouTube starts to analyze your video the moment you upload it and this is pretty advanced because YouTube can right away discover that song is a famous song that piece of your video comes from another video and so always create as much original content as possible uh, sometimes YouTube is overzealous and flags your video as as violating the rules so if you would like to appeal that ruling, eventually when you verify your account, you'll be able to do so. You'll be able to provide documentation. This is my video. This is my content. Here's the proof. We've done this for a few of our clients. Their video, uh, like a, they, they were featured on, a, on, on TV. And the TV station gave the, gave the client a copy of their video. We uploaded it to the YouTube. And YouTube right away said, this video is not yours. It belongs to, to Fox. No, we go in here, we do the content appeal, and we said, we have this signed agreement, we have this proof, here it is, look at this. And then YouTube says, okay, fine. And then they let it go. But you can't appeal that unless you, uh, unless you verify. We have the ability, as we'll see later, to do unlisted and private videos. I'll talk about the difference later. If you want to do live streaming, you have to turn it on. Do you want the basic video editor? Um, this video editor is not as good as Movie Maker or iMovie. So we have a built-in basic video editor in YouTube, but there's more downsides to it that I'll talk about later. You can get fan funding. You can get people donating to your YouTube channel, making money off of your videos that way too. Maybe every month you're uploading a new video and you've got there, please donate You know, $5 a month to help us to keep to keep making videos for you. So a lot of settings here. A lot of them say learn more. If you still have questions, I would go into learn more to learn more. Any general questions on this screen? Let's look at upload defaults. Every time you upload a video, you can of course craft its description and keywords and all of that in order to be found. But if you're constantly uploading videos with certain topics and such, you can set the defaults here. When we upload a video, we'll have all of these things that we need to fill in to help us get found. So for example, privacy. We've got public, unlisted, and private. Let me, look, let me write down right here. Public. So types of vids. Public can be found by anyone. If someone searches YouTube, or someone searches Google, or Bing, or any search engine, they could find your video. That's the default. And we've got unlisted. Cannot be found by search 
but still viewable with the link. So it's like when I, in the old days, when we had our name in the phone book and we paid to be private, your name was not in the phone book. But if someone still has your address, they'll still find you. Uh, so here, this could be a way for me to upload my videos to YouTube and no one can get to them unless they have the link. So let's say I have a newsletter that I publish once a month. I have my videos on YouTube and I send that email to my 20 followers with a link to that video. Now yes, of course, they can then take that link and forward it to 40 other people and now more people see your video. So that's not perfect. It's, it's that just those that you've let see the video with a link can see the video. Then you've got private. This is uh, no one can see or find your video. Actually, this still has a feature where you can send it privately to people you approve. If you put someone's email, if you approve this one email address, they can see it. If you approve these three email addresses, those three can see it, and they cannot forward it to anyone else because their email address is not approved to see it. So for all intents and purposes, no one can see it. If you really want only certain people to see it, you can set that up. It's very cumbersome because you're not going to be able to send this out through your email distribution list because you have to approve all 40 of those people on your distribution list manually. You have to add each email address, save, next email, save, next email, save. So it's not done by password, it's done by approved emails? It's done by approved emails because then when the person has the ability, it'll say log in to YouTube. So that email needs to be attached to a YouTube account or a Gmail account. And then that's how that's approved. You've got some categories where you can put your video in. It's a good idea to categorize your videos so people can find them. If you put your videos into how to and style, then when someone is searching in that section, they might find your video. We can obviously change all of these whenever we want. To try to put your video in the right place. And there isn't uh, every single kind of get category. Let's say I'm doing uh, videos on realty. I've got a realty company. Which of these would you say I should put my videos into if I've got a realty company? Maybe travel? Maybe? What's that? Maybe how to. Maybe how to? Maybe education? I'm educating someone? Yeah, so it's going to depend upon your video. So I'm a bakery. I don't see anything about bakery or food. Do I? So, again, maybe the catch-all. That's the one that's often the catch-all. Entertainment. That's a really stupid category. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not they're not that good. But this is not the only thing we're going to rely on to get found we're going to rely on these next items right here. Title, description, and tags. That's how you're going to break out of the confine of that category. So let's look at these in detail. I'll start with tags first. These are going to be keywords to get found by. Uh, these are going to be applied in this screen. All of this will be applied to all of your videos the moment you upload them. And you can change them, of course. But let's say I'm over and over going to be uploading videos with a certain uh, tag, tutorial. I'm going to upload a lot of tutorials. Uh, let's say I'm going to be, and then comma, DIY, and comma, how to. I'm attaching some basic tags over and over. These are the kinds of videos I will upload. Maybe I don't know yet, so you don't have to fill it out yet. Maybe I'll figure out these types of tags as I start to add some videos. I like doing this kind of video. This kind of video is taking off. I'll keep doing these kinds of videos. If, uh, if you go back and add more to that or change them, does it affect the ones that are already in? No, this is not retroactive. So if, if I've already got five videos, this will not go back and add it to them. It'll go f going forward. 
Then we've got description and we've got title. If you look at description, again, we have a lot of space to type whatever we want here. We can type a whole essay here if we want, which is good because we can fill it with a bunch of keywords and phrases to get found. Obviously, we want to stay on topic, though. I don't want to put in a bunch of irrelevant things just to get hits. You know, uh, I'm not going to uh, write, you know, shocking news report here, and it's not about that at all. Uh, the caveat here is that when you watch any video, so here's our, our video that after the ad. Here's our video that went viral. Uh, every video is like this in that it's the actual video, some description stuff here. There's my description, there's my title, keywords are in there. Every video has a very small snippet of what you wrote in that description. Um, there's show more. So you've only got really two lines to really catch people's attention. Three lines, actually. Three lines to catch people's attention. And some people might not ever think about show more. Under show more, obviously, there will be more there. But if you can get your point across in your first three lines, that's very valuable. People will see that right away. That's an active link. You can put active links in your descriptions. So let's say over and over for Victor's Bakery, I also want people to visit my bakery website. So I'm going to say brought to you by Victor's Bakery. And if I put a an active link, a link like that, it'll become active once I publish it. I can put as many links as I want in this description. Better yet, save 10% off at Victor's Bakery. Why would someone click? Use coupon cookie 99. So something to entice people to click always. And that's the first thing they will see in the description on all my future videos. You can also do here hashtags. Follow our hashtag. Hashtag Victor's Bakery. Hashtags, remember, have no spaces and no special characters. Uh, I believe you can put numbers. Look, that's a hashtag like we saw on Twitter, Google Plus, Pinterest, etc. The purpose of that is that if I'm using this keyword over and over throughout YouTube, all my videos, I always write here, follow our hashtag, hashtag Victor Bakery. When I publish my videos and someone sees my video like this, they will see a, an active hashtag, and when they click on it, it's basically going to search all of YouTube for that keyword. Therefore, all of my videos with that hashtag will be found right away by people. To simplify your portfolio, do a little spring cleaning. Uh, but the point of that is, if you add a hashtag, I just feel so lucky. Link, I've lived such an incredible life. I don't want to go back to being that guy that I was. So that'll become an active tag. Someone clicks on it, all videos with that hashtag then show up. Joel Dixon, let's talk about some ETF ideas. Let's say that's what I'm going to be putting to all my future the videos. Use of limit default. orders because I will this is something all of them which caused people detail, a lot of trouble of back course, in August when of I get this year. Yeah, so it's not so much an ETF Therefore, issue I might as not opposed set to how title to trade default. the ETF. And you know, best practices when you think about trading about titles is to use later, limit orders about what to give to yourself some your price title. protection. I'm not going to quite people give you any advice just yet about what's right in the title. Sometimes people say on tutorials, well, don't forget in your title default here to write your, your website, you know, Victor's Bakery. I wouldn't quite follow that advice because you're taking away valuable space for people to see when you search. So if I search and I see all of these 
videos on the side here. ETF trading strategies presented by Mark Chaikin, Vanguard founder Jack Bogle on mutual funds, five best ETFs to buy now, ETFs versus index funds. All, none of these really are also promoting the name of the company in the title because it's not necessary. The name of your company on YouTube is still going to be displayed right there for you. Forbes, Zacks Investments, etc. So you don't have to waste the space also putting your company address in the title. Save it to put the keywords about what your video is. So my advice here is don't put a default title here. You'll craft it on a case-by-case -case basis on every video you upload. Is, is that company uh, name part of the uh, profile that you set up? Yes. When you set up your profile uh, early on, when it says, what's the name of your channel? That's the name that shows up here. And we can edit it if we want to, but if it's attached to your Google+, Plus, it also comes from your Google+. Plus. So if you change your Google+, Plus, it'll change on YouTube, and that's what shows up right there. Since we changed this on a different screen, it changed for us here. But here's where you can change, allow all comments or allow approved comments. Again, I recommend approved. If you don't want any comments at all, if, you're, if your video is way too hot to handle, you may want to turn off comments and not have people bothering. But again, this goes against what I've said previously about using social media as a dialogue rather than a monologue. Let people comment to get the ball rolling, to get more activity, more links, more traffic. Positivity breeds positivity. If you turn that off, you might lose on an aspect of getting more views and hits. I don't believe YouTube penalizes you for not allowing comments. I could be wrong, but I usually run all my social media and my clients' social media with this setting here. Let people comment, but we will approve it. And it seems to work. Can people see those all those thumbs down you're getting? Yes or no? Can people see all those thumbs up you're getting? Yes or no? If your video has a spoken language, perhaps set it to a specific language so that people of that language can find it easily. So if my videos are mostly in, in Tamil, I might want to turn that on and Tamil speakers will want to uh, find my video easier. All of these things are defaults which can be changed on a case-by-case -case basis, of course. Don't worry about subtitles yet, caption certification, I'll get to that later. Suggest video improvements, you can leave that on, don't worry just yet. Video location, you can attach a location if you'd like. So if all your videos are based in San Diego, because your business is in San Diego, you can attach, you can attach a location to that. So if people are searching that, they can find that. You can put in zip codes, 91914, it's there. And you can also move this little pin exactly to show these videos are all about the Great East Lake Lake, right there. And it'll have coordinates. Then there'll be a, the, the Google map will show up on the, um, this is, looking at the video? No, this is more for when people are searching uh, specific locations. So that, that map doesn't doesn't really show up. Oh, it's searching it. YouTube. Video stats, would you like to show other statistics about your video, visible to people or not, number of plays, and durations, and all of that. That's up to you to change if you'd like. So I'll save this screen. We'll take a quick look at a couple more things, then we'll take a break. Uh, we can't do much with featured content yet, but this is a way for you to constantly show a specific video. If one particular video has gone viral, I want to keep showing it. If I want to try to build more awareness for a particular video, I can feature it. I can do a channel ad, which is that when your videos play, you're then going to really focus on this other video. You saw this video, now watch this one. You can only choose one at a time here, basically, but you can swap them out as necessary. So it's just to focus your people's attention more on certain videos. Branding is useful because you can add a little watermark to the corner of your video. So you're watching a particular video, let's see... And uh, use market orders or even stop-loss orders. 
and the problem with that is the moniker Have for room. active rules-based trace. And it is a lot. My father owned a fish and chip in New Bedford. His father owned a Where? Joel Dixon, let's talk about some ETF ideas yeah. for 2016. It wasn't there a, a big it goes market away, I volatility. Uh, yes, Joel Dixon, that, let's talk about some that ETF that ideas for 2016. Right so it shows up in the corner is of the video. The use right of there. limit orders. It's a link this is back to your channel. Which caused people a lot of and trouble the back in August of this year. Because what if someone yeah, so it's not so much an ETF issue as a video. Let's say this is one of ours. Let's say someone shares this video off to their own Twitter, their own Facebook, their own website, whatever. It goes off somewhere else, free advertising. And then the video has the, the, the watermark in the corner. Right there. So then that's going to be an active Hello, everyone, link. and welcome to another episode to of the BMC account. Inc. Financial News Network. I'm Victor Campos. So, so let's uh, take a look at the first mm -hmm. trading day of 2016. When you're it wasn't over the video so good, videos. honestly. We've got China weighing down. This is just a simple, uh, small markets. graphic. It says but, uh, as upload a graphic see, that is transparent, uh, we can take, that has no uh, background. If it's got a plain white background, you're going to get a weird so here white is square our there. Hypothetical, but notice on this one, you uh, see ETF through. Portfolio. This see is a through pretty it. safe portfolio. Based it doesn't on tell you a dimension, exchange traded but again, funds, it's going to be very small. Stocks. And basically safety in numbers and diversification. And because it can be shown on a variety of devices. So our hypothetical portfolio. We've got BND, That's the same VT, VTI, VYM, Dimension Zero, Vanguard, funds. Square Channel Icon, um, or We've got uh, Total market, Bond Market, which we've they call got uh, Total uh, World Market, we've got square. Uh, US Market, and we've got High Dividend Yield Fund. So this is our basis of our portfolio. Let's take a look at today's numbers. So one day change. Uh, bond a, a, ended today at 80.75. VT is self-explanatory here. VTI if you need to change the name of your VN channel here or your icon, it's under advanced. And as we can see, they're all negative. Probably want to change um, country. Bond lost. This just is a country one, where uh, one percent it's targeted to. Where the other ones lost 1.68, 1 1.50. In 1 general, you can also put so keywords to your whole channel here. Looking at things in the 52-week range, yeah, however, why? paints a These bit are of a do-it-yourself videos. So, let's say. if we look at some of that briefly, uh, bond uh, put advertisements will actually higher than the 52-week average, which will um, pretty close to it. Relate and bonds don't uh, to those don't videos. To those ads so that keep popping up before and after the, the your videos, you might not want that, so you turn it off. Between does not apply to videos that you monetize. And videos are claimed by third party. And again, we're near the the low end of the range. This is going uh, to show VTI, ads based on a particular interest. If you don't want people to see certain videos about MD. those topics, you so can turn that off. Usually want it on because it'll show the right video VTI. about the right topic so people and can click has so you can make money. To 70, 66. So if you do go through the process of monetization, it'll weeks. ask you to create an AdWords and account, uh, kind of a Google AdWords account. That's where your money is going to be deposited. As an intermediary, you're going to make money on YouTube, it's going to put it in your AdWords account. Once we the want threshold is reached, it's going to get deposited to your bank account. The obvious you mantra sort of, clear of the stock the market. So if our not too complicated, but it will ask you for your bank account, great routing number, all of that stuff, and then you'll get money. Yes. Now, I'm not saying we're going to time the market, of course, because that's not a good strategy. I'm just saying that at this point in time, if I had some money to invest, I would invest in all You of could do separately funds. if you want, so or you can use the same one for our holdings. For myself, screen, I've got my AdWords on for my website and my this. YouTube monetization so, in one. So I have it all in one just to make it easier, but you can share of each. Uh, value of $306.09. There's a recommendation, allow my channel to appear in other people's channels. I would leave that on. So we I want someone paper, else's video to then segue cents, possibly to mine. Since video. our purchase, if you don't want that, you can however, turn it off. we've lost $11.17. And Do you want to show everyone you've got zero uh, subscribers? Percent. Yes or no? Uh, if you recall from the at the beginning, video, this hypothetical at the beginning, you might not want to show your low number of subscribers, but as you build them, you know, 10, 11 of them, maybe show it. But as a beginner, again, popularity beats popularity, and no popularity beats no popularity. So if you've got zero, you might not be getting many followers that quickly because they're going to see this channel, no one likes it, no one subscribes. Why would I subscribe? 
but maybe at the beginning don't show that yet. Uh, invest starting this year and if you've got a Google a Analytics account you can create a tracking ID to attach here so that Google Analytics can show you more is. data it's, it's about your visitors game. you don't want to look out of our scope what happened day take to day, the SEO week, class week, month to month but if you Sometimes know how to use Google Analytics you can attach a property here long stretches of time three years save five that if you made any changes 20 years because the data shows Any general questions? 100 years of stock market data if i didn't say something bad times and good times about something good I'm times skip over the moment. the bad times. Any general questions and reset our values and we're going to right, we're running a little long so let's take a break uh, keep track it's 10:46 uh, we'll be back at 10:56 so and we'll, we'll look at a couple other screens here and then we'll upload a video and talk about optimizing our video